Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Glory to God forevermore. Abel Damina is my name. I'm so excited to announce to every one of you in Cameroon, I will be in Cameroon. Oh my goodness. It's the revelation of Jesus Conference right here in Cameroon. The date will be the 6th to the 8th of December 2022. And take note of this. On Tuesday, which is the 6th of December, the conference will be 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday, we have a morning session by 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., two meetings on Wednesday. And then finally, on Thursday, is the final meeting, which will be 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Guys, this is one conference you don't want to miss. Venue will be Hill Park Hotel, New Road, Up Station in Bamenda, Cameroon. It's going to be in Bamenda, Cameroon. There are numbers to call, and those numbers are coming on the screen, but I'm going to read them for you, plus 237 Six seven eight two two one eight seven nine plus two three seven six seven eight two two one eight seven nine or plus two three seven six eight zero two one five one seven zero plus two three seven six eight zero two one five one seven zero or plus two three seven six seven seven Four nine one six six five. I repeat, plus two three seven six seven seven four nine one six six five. Cameroon, it's gonna be one conference that will change your life forever. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen carefully. Until Jesus is revealed, the believer cannot be unveiled. Is the revelation of Jesus that unveils the identity of the believer. Until you know who you are, you can never know what you have. And until you know who you are, you can never know what you are able to do. So the revelation of Jesus unveils your true identity, your true capacity, and your true ability. I'm looking forward to meeting every one of you. Travel from your different cities. Travel from your different areas in Cameroon. Let's all converge at Bamenda with the revelation of Jesus Christ. Ah, you guys, you just get ready. Don't meet me there, guys. Beat me there. Amen. Welcome to the most exciting event on television, Riot, Righteous Invasion of Truth, presented by the Power Broadcasting Network. Abel Damina is my name, and we want to welcome all of you to the broadcast today. We are so excited to have all of you connected wherever you're watching around the world. We welcome you to this broadcast. Whoa! Whoa! We want you to know today the word of God is going to come full of life. It's going to come full of revelation. Make up your mind to unlearn so you can relearn as the truths of the gospel are communicated to you by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. We want you to know that every time we have the opportunity to teach you the word of God is an opportunity for you to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me also use the opportunity to mention that every time we teach you the word, it's always our joy. To bring you resources that will build you up. I have written some books that will be displayed on the screen. We want to encourage you to order for those books. These new books that I just wrote. On the message of the cross and heaven. The believer's reality now. They are books that will build you up and equip you. To walk in the fullness of God's purpose for your life. Let me also mention if you are a Christian or a believer. You have not been discipled at all. Jesus said we should go and make disciples, not converts, disciples. If you have never been discipled, I would like to disciple you today. All you need to do is shoot a mail. The email address is on the screen right now. Shoot a mail to me today indicating your desire to be discipled. And there's a WhatsApp number. If you reach out on the WhatsApp, we will give you all the information 
for me to disciple you and it's for free. We will take you through teachings that will equip you to walk the fullness of God's purpose for your life on earth. Finally, if you're in a location where there is no teaching church, where you are taught Christ, where you hear the kind of things we teach and you want to identify with one or you want us to equip you to start one, we are always willing to train people to do the work of ministry. That's part of our calling as a ministry. If you're interested today to identify with a house center in your location or you want to identify with a campus or you want us to train you to start a lighthouse in your community or in your nation, shoot a mail today to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. I'll be glad to respond to you and, you know, work out how you can be trained or connect you with our campus in your locality. God's word is going to come with power. It's going to come with revelation. So I'd like to encourage you to fasten your seat belts right now as I take you on a gospel adventure into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. <laughs> Glory. Glory. All right, in this service, we're beginning a series on nurturing relationships effectively. We are looking at how to nurture and build effective relationships in our study of scripture we have said that the bible is a theology a book where we study god and know him john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the word word is the word logos Logos is where you have study. John 1.1, 1, 1, where we just read, the Bible, therefore, is the study of God and the way we study God. Just like the method that God gives to study him is what we refer to as Christology. The method that God gives to study him is what we refer to as Christology. That is, Christ is the study of God. Christ is the study of God. That is why some scholars will call the Bible a Christocentric book. A Christocentric book. Why do they call it Christocentric? Because if Jesus is God, then he is the world. His humanity is the word of God. So in Luke chapter 24, verse 25 to 27, where Jesus embarked on a study with his disciples, he said to them, O fool, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. In other words, what he has done is to go through the scriptures. Look at me, everybody. He is the only individual in the entire Bible, precisely the Old Testament. He is the focus of every book. Jesus is the focus of every book of the Old Testament. He is the only one found in every book. All the 39 books of the Old Testament, only Jesus is found there. If you read the four Gospels, no doubt he is the focus of the four Gospels. If you read the book of Acts, he is the focus of the book of Acts. Of course, if you read the epistles from Romans to Jude and Revelation, he is the focus. So, the study of God, which is the Bible, which is the theology, is found in Christology. Is found in Christology. So, Christology is when you begin to study Christ, both in the Old Testament as a promise, in the four Gospels, in the incarnation as a human being, then afterwards, in the book of Acts and the epistles. And we said that if you go further, just like in every study, you begin to break it down 
into details. Please pay attention. Now, if you say Christ, the word Christ, who he is, basically one who is anointed to save. The word Christ is one who is anointed to save. The Greek rendering of that is the word sota. Sota. S-O-T-E-R. Sota was used then for nobles. Okay? Nobles who captured territories. And they governed those territories. A sota is a noble who conquered a territory and governed the territory. Please stay with me. So Jesus is called Christ, Christos, or better still, the sota. How do you study Christ? You study him as a savior. You study Christ as a savior. So we said the Bible is a theology where you study God. The study of God is found in Christ, which is Christology. You don't know Christ outside the work of salvation. You cannot know Christ outside the work of salvation. Now, that is soteriology, where we now study the details of salvation. Christ came to this world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Brother Paul will speak to Timothy in these terms. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Next verse. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundantly with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Give me verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who had enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into ministry. So brother Paul said he was injurious. He was a persecutor, but Christ saved him. Jesus is the savior of the world. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. And so Jesus is the savior. So we study how he saves. We said, what is the element of that salvation? That is, when he rose from the dead, which is the high point of the salvation plan, he gave us his spirit. When he rose from the dead, which is the high point of his salvation plan, he gave us his spirit. So, if I come to do something, I say, well, this is the reality of what I have done. John will call it in John chapter 14 verse 16. And I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Next verse. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. But you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Even the spirit of truth, what it means is, even the spirit of reality, the spirit of reality. Look at verse 18 of the same John chapter 14. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. So that is the spirit of the reality. The reality of the work of salvation is found in the Holy Ghost. The reality of the work of salvation is found in the Holy Ghost. So we said that is in the Greek he's called pneuma. Pneuma. P-N-U-E-M-A. Pneuma. Which is used for unseen things that are real. Unseen things that are real. Whether it's the wind or beings. So the Bible is a theology. The study of the Bible is Christology. 
then the study of Christ is soteriology, where you find him as the savior. Then the reality of that salvation in our lives today is pneumatology. Are you following? I go over it again. The Bible is a theology. Then the study of the Bible is Christology. Then the study of Christ as our savior is soteriology. Where you find him as the savior. Then the reality of that salvation in our lives today is pneumatology. Pneumatology. So theology will be found in Christology. Christology gives to us soteriology. The reality of soteriology is made evident in our lives by pneumatology. The work of the spirit in our lives. So Christ died for you and gave you the reality of what he has done. That is his spirit. So the Holy Spirit brings to our daily experiences what Christ has done. So we said there's theology, there's Christology, there's soteriology, there's pneumatology, then the practice of it, which is you didn't die to go to heaven. Like preachers will tell you, when you die, you go to heaven. Heaven is the end of the world. That's the way some preachers put it. No, heaven is not the end of the world. Heaven is the beginning of salvation. Heaven is the beginning of salvation. So how do you live that life amongst men? How do you live that life of heaven amongst men? We said that would be called ecclesiology. Ecclesiology. The word ecclesia is where you have the word church. Church is to call people out of orders. So Jesus has called us out of darkness into life. The called out ones are the ecclesia or the study of ecclesiology. Ecclesiology. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light. Next verse. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So we are his chosen generation. We are his royal priesthood. We are his peculiar people. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. It says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly in Christ. Verse 4. According as he had chosen us in him. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love so he has blessed us he has chosen us in him so within this world we are his called out ones to show forth the praises of god we are his church we are not his church in one locality in fact you know every word has history every word okay language every word has history every word has an explanation the word church is not a spiritual term the word church is not a heavenly language that's why when jesus used it his disciple understood what he was saying or talking about they didn't say what is church <laughs> in matthew 16 13 who do men say that i the son of man am some say Elias, some say Jeremiah, some say one of the prophets. Who do you say that I, the son of man, am? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father which is in heaven. And I say unto you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, my ecclesia, 
or my senate my ecclesia he didn't say i will build the church i will build my meaning there were other churches but i will build my own so the word church was not a coinage of jesus it was a popular word used among the greeks i will build my ecclesia i will build my church upon this rock ecclesia is two words in the greek ek ek which means out leleo which means to call out so if i call out the called out ones at the ecclesia for example if i say who is a student of chemistry here and you lift up your hand and i say stand up and come out i called you out this is the congregation but i singled you out of the congregation you are still in the congregation but set apart Okay, are you following? You are still part of this congregation, but I brought you out of the crowd and set you apart. In other words, you are called out. It's not you are called out to go to another place. You are called out, but you are still within this congregation, the church. So, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 to 17, Jesus said, if your brother offends you, go to him. And he will hear you. He said, go and call other brothers if he refuses to hear you. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Then he says, if he will not hear you, tell it to the ecclesia. Tell it to the ecclesia, the gathering. Tell it to the gathering. So they understood what he meant. When he said, I will build my church. Now, the background of that word in the Greek usage, follow this very attentively. The Jews used it as a congregation. Where as a family, they left Egypt. As a family, they left Egypt. They were living in Egypt, but they were called a congregation within Egypt. They were a congregation within Egypt. The Greeks, however, used it for something a bit different. Where individuals will be taken from among citizens of a nation to go and act on behalf of their nation. They are called out from the citizenry and sent as representatives, the senate. Like we have the senators of the Federal Republic representing the different zones of the country to deliberate and represent the interest of their regions. That senate is the ecclesia, the called out ones. God cannot be in your midst and you are in oppression. It's not possible. So when they say you are Jeleon, it means the victory has been accomplished. We are restored to God. He now reigns in our midst. You are Jeleon. He now reigns in our midst. That is the word you are Jeleon or gospel will mean good tidings. Notice verse 7 says the feet of him. The feet of him, not the feet of them. The feet of him, singular. One person, not many people. So it was a prophecy about Jesus. The feet of him. Isaiah 52, 7. Isaiah 61, verse 1. You can read it for further studies. To preach what? Good tidings. To who? To the meek. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek stay with me so this scripture is about jesus look at luke chapter 4 verse 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised look at verse 21 
And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So the phrase gospel refers to what the Messiah accomplished. The phrase gospel refers to what the Messiah accomplished. What the Messiah accomplished is what we call the gospel. What the Messiah accomplished is what we call the gospel. What did he do? The news of what Jesus has done, which is the kingdom of God. Now he reigns. He is not going to reign at the end. He is reigning now in the earth. The gospel is the message of the reign of Jesus today amongst men. <laughs> the reign of God amongst men. So when we go into all the world to preach, we are not saying when you die, you will go to one place. <laughs> when you die, you will go to somewhere. That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. But that's what most people preach. Heaven at last. Follow the ladder. Ladder, 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 ladder. <laughs> that's not the gospel. We pray that you make it at last. That after all this life, may we arrive there. That's the exact opposite of the gospel. It is there now. It is there now here. There is now here. Did you understand? The gospel is there. Is now here. <laughs> That's exactly what he asked them to preach. Your God reigns now. They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign where? In life. When? Now. Not at last. Heaven at last is a contradiction to the gospel of Christ. It's actually, it's, it's actually contrary. May we make it at last. It's an insult to the work of redemption. It's an abuse of the gospel. If Jesus is God, as John 1.14 tells us, the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. That means Isaiah 52 verse 7 has come to pass. That means Isaiah 61 verse 1 has come to pass. When we are preaching it, we preach that that event has come to pass. That's exactly what he said. So he says, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Which is what the gospel means. It's been given to me. Go therefore. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go. Go in the strength of my finished work. And announce the victory that I have obtained. Don't go and talk about what I will do. There is nothing more I will do. It has been done. Who am I talking to in this service? When you go to preach, in other words, go and preach. The gospel is to say, God has come to dwell amongst men now. That's the gospel. So in Matthew 28, 18, what he's referring to, when he says heaven and earth, if you read the gospel of Matthew very well, you will discover that he is saying, heaven has come. In other words, God has come to dwell in our midst now. Hey, Tabata. You know, one day the disciples were looking for when heaven will come. They were looking for the arrival of heaven. Jesus said to them, the kingdom does not come by observation, but the kingdom is among you. Heaven has arrived. Heaven is here now. We are not going to heaven someday. I am going higher. Yes, I am. 
Oh, in Abonda shadow. Have you forgotten it? <laughs> we are not going. We are there. The gospel is heaven is here now. Ah, Jesus came. And if Jesus is God, and he came in the four gospel, that means Isaiah 52 has come to pass. God now reigns. God is here now. Zion is here now. The kingdom of God is available now. And out of Zion, the kingdom goes all over the earth. Out of Zion, the kingdom goes into all the earth. If Jesus is God, like I said, so he now says, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. What we are preaching is that the event that God promised has already happened. Which is what the gospel means. Go therefore and make disciples of every nation. Kabayada, stay with me. What's the gospel again? Heaven and earth have come together in Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? The gospel is that heaven and earth has been amalgamated in a person. The gospel is the reality of the amalgamation of heaven and earth in Christ. You didn't hear that. The gospel is the reality of the union of heaven and earth in Christ right now. So he says, go into all the world and announce that reality. Announce that heaven and earth has become a reality now in the person of Christ. But I thought that was the job of Christ, the announcement. Blessed is the feet of him, one person. I thought it's Christ alone that should announce it. Because what we read in Isaiah 52, it was the responsibility of the Christ the anointed one. How come he is saying it to 11 people or more than 11 people? That is what we are going to explore in the next few weeks. Because that thought ought to be the duty of the church. What did he say to the 11 people? What did he say to the 12 or maybe the 120 or maybe the 3000 or all of us here? And we will see why. He says to make disciples of every nation. The word disciple means to make people to learn. The way you make people apprentice in your organization. An apprentice is someone who begins to learn an art a trade or a profession. An apprentice is someone who begins to learn an art, a trade or a profession. And usually, you start from the basics. You put the person through what this is about. Make disciples, the Greek word matetio. Matetio, matetio. It means to make people students. Listen attentively here, please. You know, salvation, getting people born again can happen in seconds. Some of you don't even know when you got born again, but you just know it happened. Because it's like that. Salvation happens in seconds. In fact, many of us cannot identify when it happened. It happens in seconds. You preach to someone, he believes in his heart, he is saved. The thief on the cross just said to Jesus, when you get to paradise, remember me. Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. But that is different from discipleship. Salvation is different from discipleship. Discipleship takes you your entire life. Salvation happens in seconds. But discipleship is a lifetime. John chapter 3 verse 3. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 6, verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me 
have everlasting life. So what does it take to have everlasting life? Believe in Jesus. The moment you believe, you are saved. But discipleship doesn't happen like that. Discipleship is a lifelong activity. It takes you all your life. And the church is the center for discipleship. The church is not where we get saved. Even though you can be born again in the meetings in church. But the church meetings are where disciples are, are made. Where disciples are raised. It's like going to school. You get into the school, you learn different things. You don't get to the school and suggest to the school what they should teach you. Say, excuse me, prof, you are my class lecturer. Let me tell you for your information. I don't want lectures that include calculations. So whatever you're going to teach me, avoid calculations. Number two, make sure you don't teach more than 30 minutes. Any day you teach more than 30 minutes, I will stand up and leave the class. Nobody does that. When you go to school, you abandon yourself to the school. They determine what to do with you. They can fix lecture 1 a.m. They can fix lecture 5 a.m. And as a student, you must make yourself available. And the lecturer can teach for six hours. You have no choice than to sit there. Same thing with church. You don't come to church as a disciple and tell us what to preach. Me, I don't like any message that is not about how to be free from generational causes. Anything outside that, I won't be here. And please, Papa, I can't stay more than one hour. Once your message is reaching one hour, I have to leave. You are not a disciple. You are a fan. You are a fan. You are not even registered in the school register. You are not a, a student of the school. You are just a passerby. Real students don't suggest what they are taught. And they don't determine the duration of their lectures in discipleship you learn then you are disciplined it's like a school it's like a school look at other references matthew 13 52 then said he unto them therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and all instructed unto the kingdom of heaven that's discipleship instructed into the kingdom it is something you are instructed into look at matthew 27 57 when the even was come there came a rich man of aramathea named joseph who also himself was jesus disciple look at acts 14 21 and when they had preached the gospel to that city and I taught many. They returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. So he says, make disciples of what? Every nation. What nation there is the Greek word ethnos. Ethnos. E-T-H-N-O-S. Ethnos in the Greek. When we say nation, you think of countries. But nation in the Bible refers to a specific people that can be bound by place, bound by culture, or bound by practice. Bound by place, bound by culture, or bound by practice. So you have Israel, they are an ethnos or an ethnic group. Then you have the Gentiles. The Gentiles are another ethnic group. Then you have the hidden idol worshippers. Idol worshippers are a nation. So an ethnic group can refer to a belief system. For example, Islam is a nation. Islam is a nation. All right? Example, because they do not believe in Jesus, so they are a nation. They are an ethnos that are not part of the nation of those who believe the gospel if you're going to refer to people you refer to people based on their ethnicity their language their culture 
So there are Jews, there are non-Jews. If you're looking at the spiritual significance of that, that will be those who believe the gospel and those who don't believe the gospel. So a hidden is a non-Christian. And every non-Christian is in an ethnic group. A Christian doesn't mean someone born into a Christian family. I need to sort that out quickly. A Christian born into a Christian family, you know, grew up in a home where your ancestors, your grandparents were direct converts of missionaries. The missionaries that came with the gospel converted your grandparents and your parents inherited the religion and you are born into that religion, therefore you are a Christian. Now that's not what we mean by a Christian. And because of that, now you have a family church where all of you go to every Sunday. It's an inheritance. That's not what we're talking about. That's not Christianity. What you're practicing is religion. You have not even understood who Christ is. You're just a religious fellow. So you are Muslims. You can be in one nation. They do morning devotion in the house. They have a big family Bible. With the picture of Jesus with mustache on the wall. <laughs> and they have Christian names. Priscilla. Christiana. Angelina. Eh? Paul. Piran. Rosaline. Caroline. Caro. <laughs> Baptism name. That's not what we're talking about. It is when you have faith in Jesus that you are a Christian. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are a believer. And you belong to the church. If you don't have faith in Jesus Christ, you are a hidden. In other words, you are a nation in itself. So that word, every nation, will bring different classifications. Preach the gospel to every nation. In the sense of ethnic groups like Jews, non-jews non-jews into many nations for example in nigeria we have hausa and within the hausa there are many nations the fulani nation the kanuri nation you know all the different nations within the hausa then there's yoruba and within yoruba there are different nations there's Igbo. within Igbo, there are different nations all right and then you have the spiritual implication of the nation so in other words, the way the gospel is and the way the believer's responsibility is in the earth is never to have any sort of discrimination. The believer in Jesus must never have any type of discrimination because Jesus is the savior of the world. He shed his blood. He gave himself for the whole world. Therefore, the gospel, which is the announcement of the Messiah, is for everybody. Whether you are a believer in Christ or you are a hidden. Whether you are a Jew or a Gentile. So, one of the unique characteristics of the gospel is that the gospel is universal. It is not someone's culture being fostered on someone or on everybody. Let me tell you the significance of what I am saying. Please pay attention. Sometimes what people believe as the gospel is an American gospel. What many people believe as the gospel is an American gospel. So oftentimes it is a representation of what they call the American dream. Which is hundred and hundred years old. Hundred and hundred and hundred years old. They call it the American dream. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. And they will tell you what it is. The American dream has been reformed and called the gospel. The American dream. And we'll look at some history to bring that out. In fact, today, when you see some church flyers and some programs advertise they play the american dream into their designs 
And if you see some banks in America, their flyers have the American dream design on the flyers of banks in advertising. In fact, if you watch movies, old movies like Good Times, we show them on Kingdom Life Network, movies like Different Strokes, you know, movies like Family Matters, movies like Sanford and Sons, these are old American movies. They represent the American dream. So the gospel has been presented in that form. So when it gets to some places, it becomes an aspiration. An aspiration. What I am trying to become. So that's why you go to some churches, all their messages are about aspirations. Because those churches have been bought into the American dream, branded as gospel. Please listen carefully. Whereas the gospel is not an aspiration. The gospel is not an aspiration. The gospel is what Christ has already done. We are not here to aspire for anything. We are just here to discover what has been done in us. So we need to understand that. Please listen carefully. Someone said, all nations... I must not project any natural, cultural, ethnic group within the gospel. If it is gospel, it must not project any natural, cultural, ethnic group. When you come to the gospel, you have no culture. When you come to the gospel of Christ, you have no ethnicity. The only culture and ethnicity you have is the gospel of Christ. In some churches, they have Igbo speaking association inside the church. Ethnic speaking association. Ibibio in the church. That's not a church. That's a club. That's a club. When you come to Christ, you lose your natural affiliations. You are a new man. You are not ethic. You are not Ibibio. You are not American. You are not Jamaican. You are not South African. You are not Australian. You are not from Middle East. Once you come into Christ, there is no ethnicity. We melt into Christ. That's why in Power City, we don't talk about culture. Leave, throw away your culture through the window. The only culture we have is the word of God. It's the word of God. When it comes to the gospel, we have no natural affiliations. We are brand new men. So the gospel, therefore, is a spiritual reality that affects our everyday experience. So that's why Jesus will now say, go into all the world. Culture, notwithstanding, tribe notwithstanding ethnicity notwithstanding the gospel breaks all those boundaries preach the gospel to every creature he that believes and is baptized into christ shall be saved which means that today as a believer if you find yourself in a nation naturally speaking that is not your nation maybe you went to france and you meant French-speaking people who don't understand English. And you too don't understand French. But somehow, somehow, you know they are believers. Even with their cut and join English and with your cut and join French, you have become brothers. That's my brother. That's my sister. And we embrace them and give them the warmth of brotherhood. It's no of our tribe and place. The moment it becomes difficult for me to relate with that brother or sister, I am not practicing the gospel. The moment culture, ethnicity, status becomes a barrier between me and another brother or sister, I'm no more preaching the gospel. I'm no more in the gospel. I have left the gospel. Make disciples, which means it's something we keep learning. 
And in discipleship, we drop certain habits, certain thinking patterns. All of us are totally remolded. When Jesus said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth, he is referring to the resurrection. Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Is that resurrection? Huh? Is that resurrection? When did Jesus say go and preach? Before resurrection or after? So that is resurrection. So what am I making people disciples of? I am making people disciples of what Jesus did where? In his resurrection. I'm making people disciples of what Jesus did in his resurrection. So the resurrection, therefore, will be studied as an event and as a person. Write it down as I close. Resurrection of Jesus will be studied as an event and as a person. Go make disciples of the resurrection in every nation. Make people students of the resurrection in every nation. That means we are going to learn from the resurrection. We are going to follow the resurrection. And we are going to practice the resurrection. Three things. Number one, we are going to learn from the resurrection. We are going to follow the resurrection. We are going to practice the resurrection of Jesus. Glory to God. Are you blessed? Stand with me. I'm still laying the foundation on building and nurturing relationships. And I want you to patiently follow me. You will soon see where we're going. Are you blessed? Yeah. We make people students of the resurrection. We follow the resurrection. We teach discipleship from the resurrection. We practice the resurrection. Glory to God. If you're blessed, can I have a good amen? Stand with me. Lift up your right hands. Father, pray for everybody in this service. Everybody online, everybody watching on television, all of the radio audience, that these truths will resonate in the hearts of your people. I decree that these realities will come alive in the minds of your people. Barriers are terminated. Thank you for building an army of people here that will manifest Jesus all over the world. And we give you praise for answer prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says that amen on a note of final letter. Glory to God forevermore. Abel Damina is my name. I'm so excited to announce to every one of you in Cameroon. I will be in Cameroon. Oh my goodness. It's the revelation of Jesus conference right here in Cameroon. The date will be the 6th to the 8th of December 2022. And take note of this. On Tuesday, which is the 6th of December, the conference will be 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday, we have a morning session by 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Two meetings on Wednesday. And then finally, on Thursday, is the final meeting, which will be 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Guys, this is one conference you don't want to miss. Venue will be Hill Park Hotel, New Road, Up Station in Bamenda, Cameroon. It's going to be in Bamenda, Cameroon. There are numbers to call, and those numbers are coming on the screen, but I'm going to read them for you. Plus 237 678 221879. Plus 237 678 221879 or plus 237 680 2151 70 plus 237 680 2151 70 or plus 237 677 491665. I repeat, plus 237 677 
491-665. Cameroon. It's going to be one conference that will change your life forever. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen carefully. Until Jesus is revealed, the believer cannot be unveiled. It's the revelation of Jesus that unveils the identity of the believer. Until you know who you are, you can never know what you have. And until you know who you are, you can never know what you are able to do. So the revelation of Jesus unveils your true identity, your true capacity, and your true ability. I'm looking forward to meeting every one of you. Travel from your different cities, travel from your different areas in Cameroon. Let's all converge at Bamenda with the revelation of Jesus Christ. Ah, you guys, you just get ready. Don't meet me there, guys. Beat me there. Amen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I believe you've been impacted by that word. Oh my goodness, what a service. I believe that revelation knowledge keeps growing big on your inside until nothing else matters. We pray for you today. Sick bodies be healed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bodies and yokes be destroyed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Where you need a miracle, receive a miracle now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word that never comes back void. Thank you for confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. We give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We are very excited and we are looking forward to hearing the good report of God's goodness and kindness upon your life. Once again, you don't want to miss the broadcast. Every day we're here live, 12 noon, GMT plus one, and 6 p.m. GMT plus one on all the various platforms that we belong to. We also want to encourage you to tell more people about what you're learning. Share with more people. Get more people to hear this good word around the world. Let me quickly encourage you. If you don't belong to a campus, our campuses are extension churches where we create an enabling environment for believers to assemble and learn the word of God with us all over the world. Wherever you're watching right now, if you don't belong to one, you can identify with one today. God never intends for you to be in isolation. God does not intend for you to just operate on your own. You need to be in a house. You need to be in a family. You need to be in a church where you are accountable and where people are watching over your spiritual growth. And that's what our campuses provide around the world. If you want to identify with a campus today, send a mail to me, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com, indicating your location, and we will look out for how to connect you to any of our campuses in your area. But if there is no campus and you've looked around, you can't find one, but you're looking for that fellowship of brethren and believers to grow with, and to evangelize your community will. We're willing to train you, equip you, and teach you the word of God to a point where you too can begin a lighthouse in your community. Remember, you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. If you want us to train you today, shoot a mail to me telling me you want to be trained as a campus coordinator, and we will take you up on it and train and equip you. Finally, we have a global discipleship academy. You've been a Christian. Nobody has discipled you. Jesus said we should make disciples, not converts, not churchgoers. Disciples. That's very critical. If you've never been discipled, I will want to disciple you personally. All you need to do is send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com indicating your desire to be discipled by me and I will take you up on it and take you through discipleship. Remember, the discipleship training is free. We don't charge you a dime. Our intent, our desire, our prayer is to see men and women rise all over the world doing the work of Jesus. Once again, we love you. We are so glad that we have the opportunity to bring you clarity and bring you the word. We look forward to bringing more word to you. And we want you to tell more people about what God is doing right here with us at Power City International. Until I come again your way, same time, same station. Don't you ever forget this, that the kingdom of God is in power. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Whoa.